Imagine now you have a task, which is to make a model more accurate. What would you do? There are basically two categories of methods that you can do it. First one is you improve your model, you improve your, your algorithms. Another one is you improve your data, either by adding more training examples or clean your data. That's also we call a data-centric approach. That's uh, what NGN is actually strongly promoting. Uh, basically, I, uh, I totally agree with, with them because you see nowadays, you, if you look at the deep learning papers, 95% yeah, of uh, papers are talking about model, model architectures. Mm. Only 5% of, maybe, maybe even less than 5% of people are talking about data. So uh, if you are working in the industry, actually you will find out that most of the time you are improving your data, right? So today's paper, it's actually very practical. Uh, we want to talk about it's uh, how to use some sampling technique to sample data from external source that the data is that similar to your in-domain data so that you can improve your model for your in-domain tasks. This paper is special for me because I'm so honored to be one of the authors of this paper. It's actually uh, my first paper uh, in computer science domain. I'm actually a physicist by training and I studied physics in University, grade school, grade school, I never expected I would publish a paper in computer science. So that's very interesting. And also thanks to my awesome colleague, Chen, Tommy, Shashi, Simon. Uh, they give the very, very strong support in writing and working on this paper. And also definitely thanks to Dialpad, which is my company that allows me to uh, have time, uh, spending some time working on this paper. Also, this paper is accepted at WhatNot uh, workshop at the EMNLP 2021, which is coming in the next month, November 2021. If you are going to the conference, don't forget to check out our paper. So the contributions of the paper is, first one, we introduce a sampling technique to select additional training data that is similar to your in-domain data, so you can have more data for your task and leverage some large public available data sets. Uh, they contain punctuations because our task in this paper is uh, punctuation restorations, which I'll introduce that uh, a little bit more. In the movie subtitles, it's uh, kind of very similar to, a little bit similar to our in-domain data, in-domain data business conversations, and the movie subtitle is very well punctuated. And also we do extensive experiments and, sh and shows this is quite effective. This method is quite effective on the real world, real data. So what is punctuation restoration? And it's quite simple. The input of the model is a raw text, which is lowercase uh, text without any punctuation marks. Then the model needs to uh, insert the correct punctuation marks. When you insert a punctuation marks, basically you do a sentence tokenization. You know where is the boundary of sentence. So the model will also pull a, a uppercase, the first character, first letter of a sentence. This is basically rule based. So the, what the model is actually doing is punctuations. So you can see it's just a punctuation restorations. This part is uh, uh, the, the major task. And there are a few ways to attack the problem. The first one is you can do a sequence to sequence uh, model. Uh, basically, you have the input tags, unpunctuated tags. The model just uh, generate the, your target, which is uh, punctuated tags, and also do some capitalization. Uh, but the problem with this model is uh, because it's sequence to sequence, it's usually auto regressive model. Uh, oh, it's quite slow usually quite slow. Definitely there are some non auto regressive sequence to sequence model, but uh, just uh, uh, still not as fast as sequence labeling in general. So this is the second approach, uh, which is what we uh, took and also most of the and also most of other studies also using this leverage these methods. You can see there's a sequence labeling or token classification, which is you predict the next punctuation mark of the given token. For example, I have a pen, do you? Right, then I the tokens after I and F, after F, after uh, has no any punctuation mark, basically space. So in this case, it's num, num, num. And, 
after pen, there's a punctuation mark. It's period. So and the model will predict, oh, the next punctuation mark after pen is period. So you predict period. And do the next token after after do actually is a space. So there's a no punctuation, so it's none. And the do you, uh, after you, there's a, actually the question mark. The model will predict, should predict a question mark there. So this is a sequence label, use a sequence labeling way to frame this problem. Okay, by the way, also, if you would like to receive more deep learning related videos like these, don't forget to subscribe. So this is in domain data, our in domain data. Our in domain data just uh, uh, because our company uh, transcribe uh, phone conversations. So in domain is like basically phone conversations, especially for business usage. So we sample 320,000 utterances that produced by our ASR model. Uh, over a period of year, and uh, we remove some uh, repetitions, uh, false starts, and the filler words, but not all. Uh, there's uh, no perfect model that can remove them. Or we probably remove maybe half of them. And uh, if we we figure out if we lay the annotators to annotate the raw text, uh, unpunctuated text, that takes very very long time to annotate, because it's very hard to read unpunctuated te text. If you try, uh, you will f you will realize this. Be sometimes we, when we read things, we actually rely on the boundaries of sentence uh, using punctuations uh, a lot. If you remove them, you basically need to do a sentence parsing in your mind, and that's extremely time consuming. So we 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 run we run a rough mo rough model. It's the model that we use large, much smaller data sets to train and we just uh, use the model to do some estimations. Uh, you can call it pre-punctuation. Pre and uh, human notators need to correct them. So we uh, let the notators, uh, many notators, of, co of course, uh, uh, annotate the 320,000 utterances, which is quite a lot, actually. So this here is uh, the distribu distribution of different punctuation uh, category. You can see definitely the most uh, punctuation marks are period and uh, cons what comes next is uh, sorry the most c punctuation mark in this data says comma and then the next is period and then questions we also even we pre-punctuated still figure out uh, the annotated data is very expensive so even the, the annotators just need to correct the punctuations that still is extremely time consuming and very expensive so we were thinking what if we can get a data that's already punctuated? Of course, it's not difficult to get a well-punctuated text, right? For example, Wikipedia, also like a novel, books. But uh, the problem is those are written texts and are very different from our in-domain data. We actually run a model um, pre-trained. -pre uh, it's not a pre-trained. We fine-tune our model first on those uh, Wikipedia data and then fine-tune our in-domain data, and we found out that did not help the re results, did not help the model, and even most of the time it harmed the model performers. We realized, ah, we probably need to find something that's uh, more like spoken language. So where can we find a spoken language data? Oh, movie subtitles. There are so many movie subtitles available, publicly, publicly available, and that's well punctuated because movie subtitles, most of them are kind of transcribed, punctuated by humans. So that's a very actually very good direction to go in, and when we look into that, uh, which is there's awesome uh, movie subtitle data sets called uh, Open Subtitles. It contains uh, it's for English English data. It contains four thousand over four thousand movies and over three hundred million examples. But the problem is for movies, there are so many different kinds of movie, right? There's some action movies, there's uh, like uh, comedies. They are horror movies, and the way they they speak are very different, are very different from the business conversations. So here are some example out of domain data means like external movie subtitle data set, and you can see here uh, it's just so different um, from the business conversation. Uh, just the, we we just let's just look in one. Uh, our dog disappear. You probably won't say this in the business phone call, right? And in, in domain data, it's more like, uh, how did you find out so far? It's this kind of general sent utterances. So uh, we did, we did fine tune, first fine tune our model on the 
just randomly sample movie subtitles and then fine tune on our in domain data, which we what we call two stage fine tuning, and it actually harms the, the model performance. So what can we do? What can we sample? Because there are so many over three hundred million utterances, and if we kind of fine tune our for our model first on the three hundred million utterances, I don't think that's foreseeable. So what we thought was. What if we can sample uh, some movie movie subtitles? Sample those subtitles; they are very similar to our in domain data. Then maybe they can help the model. So that's why we 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 kind of try the language model. The let's train on our own data sets. So this language model can estimate the probability of these subtitles. How how likely this subtitle is going to show up in our data set? Or you can say it's a perplexity. Perplexity. If the perplexity of this utterance, or this, you can call subtitle, is low, means it has higher probability to show up in our data sets. More likely to be spoken by uh, people in our uh, phone conversations, right? So we run our program uh, language model that's trained on our data already. Then we use that to estimate the perplexity of every subtitles. Then we rank the subtitles. Uh, then we select top 4.8 million subtitles, so by perplexity. Then that we call that as our semi-in-domain data, uh, around 4.8 million subtitles. So what we do is we fine tune our model first on this, this same selected external movie subtitles. Then in the second stage, we fine tune on our, on our 320,000 in domain human annotated data. And then we find out they actually improve the model quite quite a lot. So uh, in our experiments, we actually want to ask two questions. The first question is, will the model perform, perform better if we use an external data set? The answer is yes, if we use language models to sample to sample data. It will not perform better if you just randomly select the movie subtitles, but it perform much better when you like uh, purposely select subtitles that are similar to our in-domain data. So you can find out there are a few combinations. Uh, there are two dimensions. First one is uh, uh, called fine-tuning. First stage fine-tuning. First fine-tuning, second fine-tuning. And uh, also two different kind of data. Uh, one is sample external data and another is in-domain is in -domain data. The first model in -dom is just a fine-tune on uh, in-domain data, just one fine-tuning. And F1 score is around 68. And if we just fine tune on a sample external data, which is just uh, without any in domain data fine tuning, the model performance is uh, definitely much worse because the domain distribution is still different, even with sample, but it's still quite different. So 61. But if we do a two stage fine tuning, we just we fine tune uh, our model first time on sample external data, then uh, on the in domain data. Then we find out the F1 score improved over 1.2%, which is quite significant. Then this is the best model. So that's the, 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 the essential of this paper is like using language model to sample data from large amount of public data sets and use that to fine tune your model. And in our case, we're just lucky we the data that we sampled, they already contain the labels, uh, which is punctuation. If you want to uh, apply this to NER, you met uh, some other NLP task. You may think about it. You can sample that, but maybe you need to annotate those uh, selected data. But it's still, I think it's uh, uh, applicable to many different tasks. And this is two stage finding the all best performing models. Uh, you can see some breakdown performance. Uh, the commas has lower lowest recall. And also, F1 score is much lower because the reason is actually very interesting. There are a lot of repetition, false start, and uh, some AAS are trans transcript errors in our transcripts. And models often confuse about repetitions, uh, disfluencies. Even we already remove some uh, part of them, but they still contain some. And when model uh, couldn't really pre predict well, I mean, really couldn't really understand that those things well you will have difficulty inserting a correct comma. And also, the comma insertion is very subjective. Even for humans, the, the, the kind of uh, 
agreement of uh, where we show in third commas is quite low, low, much lower than period and the questions, question marks. Okay, so another question that we want to ask is, will the model performance degrade if we reduce the number of layers? Uh, this is interesting because the all experiments results I show you, actually I forgot to mention, we use six layer bird instead of uh, traditional uh, 12 layer birds because we want we need to run this model in real time uh, which is just transcribe your conversation in real time when you having a phone call with other people we transcribe it in real time so we need a model to be f small to be fast and how we do that is we use the pre a pre trained bird a bird based model uh, we use a spartan six layers of this bird based model pre trained bird based model to initialize our six layer bird model, then we fine tune that. So that's how we do that. And uh, we just wonder if we reduce further, reduce the layer to three layers, two layers, one layer, will the model performance degrade, degrade a lot? Because we found actually one, one very interesting thing is when we reduce the model layers uh, from 12 to six, the actually F1 score did not change. It's even increased slightly, but it's definitely not statistically significant. So it's, we can see that as the F1 score remains unchanged. But when we further reduce the number of layers to th three, uh, the performance reduced uh, kind of significantly. So this is interesting. And also when we uh, only feed a small portion of our data, uh, let's say when we only feed 3% of our data, the six layer model is perf just performed uh, slightly, kind of 1% FR score lower than 12 layer model. But when we increase the data size, this gap just disappear. That means if we have enough data, smaller model can be very comparable to a large model. That's just one assumption they I made. And also there are some other assumptions uh, why six layer is uh, similar to 12 layers. They may be just the biggest assumption is data size. They may also related to the bottom six layers of a pre trained bird model. It's actually uh, very good for punctuation task uh, because they are basic understanding of the text. But this is purely assumption. I really cannot tell you if that's true or not. But data size, I'm more confident that's probably probably true, but still not definitively sure. Okay, so this is one of the conclusion. Layer reduction doesn't necessarily reduce the model performance. So that's what, what you can learn from this. Uh, it's probably when you train a model, you can try to reduce the number of layers and see if the performance drops. Maybe it just drops 0.1 or even not dropping. Then you can just use that model. It's just a better model. And another conclusion is ex external data is, if the external data that is relevant to the in-domain data helps, helps a lot. And how you can select ex external data is that you can use language model sampling. But the catch is the language model that you use, you use to sample should be trained on your own data set. Because this paper is accepted at EMLP 2021, so I'm going to the conference in person, which is in Patacana, Dominican Republic. So if you are going there as well, Definitely check out our work, our poster. I'm very, very excited to talk to you and also learn many, many things from you. Finally, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. They really help the YouTube algorithm. See you in Patagana, Dominican Republic.